Good evening with Sports Night. I'm Anne-Marie Burke. Well, Barbados opening bowler Joshua Bishop registered the best figures of his young career when he took all but one wicket for the Leeward's first innings on day two of the second series of the regional under-19 three-day tournament being played in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Resuming at Park Hill playing field on 119.45, in reply to Barbados under-19's 241, Leeward's were bowled out for 239, with Bishop having the extremely impressive figures of 20 25 overs, 6 maidens, 70 runs, and 9 wickets. Joshua Grant top scored for the Leewards with 89. With a lead of 10 runs, the Bajan youngsters were then bowled out in their second innings, also for 239, to set the Leewards 254 victory. Antonio Morris was the high scorer with 49, including 6 fours and 3 sixes, while Elroy Francis took 4 for 73. By the end of play, Barbados on the 19th had the Leewards 10 for 3 in their second innings, meaning Barbados have 7 wickets to get, while the Leewards still have 240 runs to score. In the other matches, Trinidad and Tobago defeated Ghana by 9 wickets, scores Ghana 104 and 137, Trinidad 102 and 141 for 1. Leonard Julian, he actually took 2 for, Leonard Julian actually took 2 for, Six four four seventy three, and Jamaica are now chasing forty seven for victory. The winner is one eighty four and one twenty five. Jamaica two sixty three and thirteen for two. Barbados Defence Force have leveled their T20 series with Sri Lanka Defence Services after winning Game 2 in the, in the three-match series today at Paragon. BDF Combine were bowled out for 147 in their 20 overs, with both Ronaldo Brathwaite and Javon Grovesner top scoring with 34. Jennif Chaturan took 3 for 18. Here's a look at the BDF innings. The Bajan soldiers were invited to bat first and it seemed they were making a good start. Dwayne Doughty plays a beautiful shot to the boundary. But the Sri Lanka forces would soon strike back, claiming the wicket of Dario Bell give an LBW to Ashan Randika for six. BDF woes begin, 13 for one. The second wicket was soon go. Actually, only four runs were added to the score before Doughty played right into the enemy's hands. Caught by Manrifa D'Souza, the bowler skipper Janith Chatnaran, Doughty made seven. BDF now 17 for two. That brought Ronaldo Braffitt to the crease and he set to get the platoon back in order to the ropes for four. Here Braffitt goes again, the fielder really making a concerted effort, but it's just too quick for more. But another man will fall. Jamil Short is handed his dismissal papers, bowled by Chaturan for a meager six. The skipper is leaving his troops. BDF 29 for three. And the attack continued. Vitaly Wilkinson a little eager to impress and could not get back in his crease, given run out for a duck. No run added to the score. No 29 for four. Tevin Walcott came with guns blazing and facing his first ball. Let it be known he was full of arsenal. That's four. Walcott then tried to steer the ship, cutting this one nicely. Walcott added another boundary to his name, quickly sending this one to the pavilion end. He then went a little too high, scanning it, but perched right under was Sadura Dashina. Walcott added 16. BDS still in the trenches, 60 for five. Javon Grosner, he came and made his presence felt. That was a quick fire boundary. Grosner again placing the ball in the same place, moving the score along nicely. Bradford then caught the fever straight, driving this one. Is that Bradford again? You sure bet. This one edged and gone all the way. But it was starting to be too good to be true, as Bradford thought he could eat two from this shot, but on his return, just couldn't make it back. Run out for 34. BDF 81 for six, still way off where they should be. The seventh wicket was that of Jamel Gill, ball by Chatnaran, middle stump lick out. Grosner then went when he was taken, trying to go for a big one. BDF 136 for eight. Rico Wiggins then sneaked in a big six late in the game. Zelani Jose facing the spin, found his bails being taken off. Ball by D'Souza, the score won 47 for nine. And then with the last ball of the innings, Jamar Gittins was stumped. BDF combined all out for 147 in 20 overs.
services were then restricted to 143 for 7 in their 20. Jamil Stewart was the best bowler with figures of 4 for 8. The decisive game 3 is set for tomorrow. Defending champions by Real Samba Company LSC are on the verge of repeating as kings of the Cooperators General Insurance BABA Premier League. By winning Game 3 last night at the Wildey Gym by a four-point margin, LSC have taken a 2-1 lead against Barbados Hilton Resort Warriors in the best-of-five final series. CBC's Kamal Haynes reports. The big game three gets going with Lakers Keith Burkett nailing the first points of the contest from behind the arc. Ricardo Toussaint responded immediately for Warriors with a fadeaway jumper in the lane. Then Nikolai Williams joins in off the glass to give his side an early one-point lead. He had a game-high 24 points. Warriors were determined to score in the early minutes. Here Tremaine Shaw attempts the layup, but Justin Paul cleans up the slack. Lakers, however, got themselves back in the game. John Jones with the left-handed layup, collecting two of his 20 points. After doing enough to level the first quarter at 18-0, Lakers kept on the accelerator, finding basket after basket. Warriors no trailing kept the fight on. Powell receives the ball from backcourt and executes a slam dunk, collecting two of his 15. But Lakers will lead by eight at the half, 41-33. Here Burkett attacks the D and sinks it home. Second half and Powell gets Warriors out the blocks first with a straightforward layup through the lane. But Lakers continue from where they left off and Jones led the way, forcefully through the D to add two points. By the end of the third quarter, the lead had doubled to 16, 61, 45. Mark Bridgman collects two of his eight off the glass. The Warriors put out all the stops in the final quarter to reduce the deficit significantly. Williams with the pass to Jamar Headley, who slams two of his 13 on the night. But that wasn't enough as Lakers held on to win by 4, 78-74 and lead a five-match series 2-1. Kamal Haynes, CBC Sports. Game 4 is tomorrow night at 8 o'clock at the BCC Gym. Now, seven-time Woodbine champion Patrick Husbands won his 10th added money race of the season when he brought Muskoko Wonder with a late bid to win the Clarendon Stakes on that Canadian circuit. And they're off in the Clarendon and best away. Crawl from the bar narrowly in front. Pushing towards the inside for the lead near the Newfie Express. Crawl from the bar accelerates out by a length to the Newfie Express. Super hot third, Muskoka one to fourth and two and a half to Moon Swings last. Catch me if you can the tactic. Crawl from the bar by one, the Newfie Express second. Third placing super hot as a neck away. Length away, Muskoka Wonder, and three back to Moon Swings, and Crawl from the Bar putting their neck right down is drilling out in front by two and a half to almost three over Super Hot, who's gone past the Newfie Express narrowly, and Muskoka Wonder started to pick up on the outside, building momentum, and last is Moon Swings. Crawl from the Bar by two to Super Hot. The whip is out on Muskoka Wonder, but Eureka Rosa da Silva has not asked the leader. Crawl from the Bar down the lane in front. By three lengths to Muskoka Wonder, who releases the brakes now and is flying home. Muskoka Wonder coming at the rate of knots, and Muskoka Wonder joins Crawl from the bar, running on well, moon swings, and it is Muskoka Wonder, much the best by a length. No excuse, Crawl from the bar. Moon swings was an eye-catching third, then super hard, a long last, the Newfie Express, 1-4-47. The Barbados Karate Association has announced one of the largest ever national teams with 51 athletes down to compete at the IKD World Cup. Over half of the team are juniors with some making their international debut. With such a large squad, two captains have been named in Martin King and Corey Graves. Head of the BKA, Paul Bernstein, says the Barbados team is a balanced one and the squad has been training hard as they hope to do well. Stated for the Garfield Sobers Gymnasium from August 17th to 19th, the tournament has attracted over 300 athletes from Antigua, Grenada, Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Lucia, Jamaica, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Canada, USA, South Africa and England. President of the Caribbean Football Union, Barbados Football Association and Vice President of CONCACAF, Randy Harris, says his vision has always been to help the younger generation. Speaking at the 2018 Bico Awards at the Savannah Hotel, where he was honored by the company for his service and his rise to the CFU presidency and CONCACAF Vice President, Harris said he was fortunate to have done well in the two areas which he was exposed to early, those being his job at Bico and football. Harris says in 
in football specifically, he plans to bring his philosophy to life. And once he succeeds, the younger generation will bear fruit. Football is a worldwide passion. I deal with it locally. I love it. It has helped me as a human being. And I see it as a way that if I can get what my vision for it done, that we will be able to provide a lot of activity for otherwise well grow. That is why working with it, it has helped me. And my philosophy is to help the young people of Barbados. Baiko is also saying goodbye to Harris, who was awarded for his 40 years at the company, of which his last position was senior sales manager.